Hello, so it's Pocket Gamer. We're down in London. We're actually in Google London, and we were uh, talking to John. John, do you want to introduce yourself? Why are you here in Google London? What are you talking about? Yeah, um, I run a group in Google called Niantic Labs, and we make a mobile game called Ingress. And I'm actually in London. Uh, I've been talking about the next game that we're creating, which is called Endgame. Okay, well, a lot of information there. But let's let's go back in time because you're not. You have been a game maker in the past, but you're best known for some signature Google products. Do you want to maybe talk a quick kind of uh, background into why yeah. you're into this kind of stuff? Um, sure. I came into Google in 2004 when Google acquired my company, Keyhole, and we made the core technology for Google Earth. So I spent about seven years inside of Google building up the maps and Earth part of mm -hmm. the company. But more recently, we've been exploring in Niantic the idea of combining location and mobile uh, with games and making new mobile game experiences. Okay. Good. So Ingress is a location-based game. Is that is that the right description? Should it be a bit more than a bit more than location-based game? Is it? How would you, how would you describe yeah, what I mean, it is? Ingress is uh, a mobile game that's based around location. There's a deep story component that's mm. told through social media and through YouTube. Um, but yeah, it's about movement and exploration in the in the real world. And and narrative, which is not something we've seen really from location-based games before. Yeah, I mean, we reached out to. Um, uh, you know, to social media and to YouTube. We also do comic books and books as a way to tell a story and create mm -hmm. a world for the mobile game to live in, to kind of increase the emotional kind of resonance of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess you could think of it as similar to like cutscenes in a typical video game, but we felt that was a great way to kind of complement the mobile experience. Mm -hmm. So there's been, in previous years, there's been a number of kind of location-based games that have gained some sort of kind of niche appreciation. It seems to be a a genre that, to my view anyway, has kind of fallen away a little bit. But um, you, you kind of think it's still a lot of opportunity and maybe people haven't been making games, location-based location games, kind of properly or in the most, kind of, uh, in the best manner they could. I, mean, I think whenever you see true innovation, you see fits and starts. Mm. And, you know, you saw that with everything from the personal computer to the cell phone to the search engine to online mapping. So. Mm. You see early entrants that innovate in some way, and then you see things that expand the concept, and finally you see something that really proves it out, and you see mm -hmm. you know, mainstream adoption. I think with games that involve location, I think the time is right. I think mm -hmm. the people have the right hardware, and I think we've learned enough about how to make that experience that uh, we're gonna see some great compelling games that involve movement and location. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing you know, this convergence of things uh, in the health and fitness side and wearable devices as well. So I think, you know, there's a lot of interest in bringing these things together and new fun experiences. Mm. So the other thing with location-based games is partly because a lot of the conferences are there. Whenever I've heard someone talking about a new location-based game, they'll fire up a map of San Francisco and go, look at all the people in San Francisco playing my location-based game. Mm -hmm. But um, clearly the world is not based in San Francisco. So what's the kind of global spread of, of your players? and, and other people interacting outside of the US and Western Europe? Yeah, so we launched the game globally from day one. So it's played in uh, 200 countries around the world. Mm. Uh, you can um, look at an overview map of the product and see that people are playing in small towns and big cities throughout the world, in Asia, Southeast Asia, South America, Europe, the US. And I think it's also really cool that those people are often communicating and collaborating, socializing with one another, even across these international mm. boundaries. We even see people traveling internationally as they're mm. playing the game. So it's I mean, really an international experience. Was that something you kind of designed in, or are you being quite surprised about that kind of, um, kind of, I guess, community is probably the right word? That yeah, I was involved in making an MMO way back in the mm. 1990s, like ancient history. but. I had seen that kind of emergent social behavior of clans and guilds and all of that, you know, that that entails in MMOs. Mm -hmm. I think that's what makes them fun. Uh, so we were going for that with Ingress. We felt like we were kind of setting the stage for that. But frankly, I've been really surprised at the degree to which people seem to like um, having that kind of social engagement mm -hmm. and meeting new people, but in the real world, yeah. you know, which is really different than just meeting somebody and chatting with them online. And we weren't sure that people would make the leap of wanting to meet and play with new people versus kind of their existing mm. friends online. But um, people seem to really like it. So we've been having actually ingress meetups and events around the world and having really great turnout. And people mm. seem to have a lot of fun at them. Cool. Good. So that's 
Ingress. So that's kind of you've got your iOS version coming out pretty soon as well. So um, that's kind of exciting. But yep. you mentioned before you got another game that's kind of in the process of being developed, uh, End End Game. Correct. Yeah. So you can tell us. I'm obviously not out for a while, but can you, what, what's the kind of idea? How will that be different? What's the yeah, we're just beginning to work on it. Okay. Um, the goal of Ingress was to ultimately end up with a platform we could give to other people to make similar kinds of mm. experiences. So Endgame for us is a step in that direction. Endgame is a really interesting project. It is the brainchild of a guy named James Frey, who's a U.S. writer, and uh, he has created a world uh, that uh, will come out in the form of a series of novels, the first of which launches uh, worldwide at the end of this year. Okay. Uh, that's called Endgame, mm. and there's a film production uh, component to that, so there will be a movie sometime afterwards, okay. and there will be um, our mobile uh, game, which uh, takes place in that same world. Along with um, an alternate reality game, there will be uh, characters from the fiction that sort of come alive online and are involved in both the mobile game as well as the book and movie. So it's a really cool and a far-reaching project that mm. kind of ties many of things, in, many of these things together, mm. uh, with you know a big budget movie and, a, and I think a great book series. Cool, good, excellent. Thanks for much your time. Awesome.